In five months' time, English traveller Cheyenne will be turning 16, and she's already thinking about a family of her own. I always said I wanted to get married. I'd be a good wife, I'd clean, I'd, I'd make sure everything's like, in place for my husband, I'd make sure everything's sorted how it should be. 18 months ago, Cheyenne was on the lookout for a husband, but at a friend's wedding reception, she was grabbed by a fellow party guest. <laughs> right, I think it's time for you to let go. It's time for her to give me a kiss, so... <laughs> Where you going? Oh, right, this is it. <laughs> well, I was standing out here, and he got a hold of me, and then he pushed me up the road. He, like, was trying to get a kiss off me, and it's called grabbing, really. It's not nice at all, but you just have to live with it. You have to keep trying to get him off you, and that's about it. That's all you can do. <laughs> The controversial courtship technique practised by some Irish travellers may not have been to Cheyenne's liking, but she's since changed her tune. I know, it all got took all wrong. It really, like, it, it was got... It got all took out of proportion and what it was. Do you think some boys might take it too far? Yeah, some boys, obviously, if, like, their friends is around the corner or something, then obviously they're going to. They have to obviously, because they don't want to be called a failure, like, if they don't get anything, then like a number or a kiss, then obviously they're going to try and take it a bit far, because what boy wants to go back and say to his friends, look, oh, I didn't uh, get anything, I'm a bit of a failure, you know? But now all I can say is that was the best thing that ever did happen. Cheyenne is now set to marry the boy who grabbed her. I mean, at the one, she wouldn't give me a kiss. I really wanted it then. That's when you know what you want, you got to get it. I had a few drinks at me that night, and obviously I grabbed her. Just uh, love at first sight, you know. Right? Oh, Hopefully, one of them will get run over. <laughs> come on. That's my dogs. Cheyenne will marry 17 year old Irish traveller John as soon as she turns 16. How many children would you like to have? 10 or 11. 10 or 11, are you serious? Yeah. Why so many? It'd be pretty lonely if you never, wouldn't it? I think it's the best way to be, to be honest. I didn't ever think I was going to end up and marry him. I see the way John treats his mum, and they say the way they treat their mum is the way they're going to treat their wife. So if he does it like that, then I'll be very happy. Throw this dog in. You would love to throw my dog in. Why? Because it doesn't like it. It does. John, you throw it in, I'll really? never speak to you again. Really? John, no! <laughs> <laughs> That's so evil, that really was. <laughs> What's it doing? Uh, look what you've done to me, dog, John! What's wrong with you? <laughs> In three months' time, English traveller Cheyenne will marry into the McFadden family once she has passed her 16th birthday. Yeah, this is Cheyenne speaking. Yeah, I've got a pen yet. Six. Five, two, and fifty pence. Okay, God, that's a very weird amount for the fifty pence, isn't it? Who was that? Uh, the church. Because uh, obviously my dad can't pay for a church, because obviously it'd be like my dad paying John to marry me. So John's got to pay six hundred fifty-two pound fifty pence. <laughs> Traveller weddings are usually organised by the bride and her mother, but after a lengthy battle with cancer. Cheyenne's mum has recently passed away. It must be quite hard for a, a young girl of your age to be planning their wedding. It is. At the start, it's like really hard and nothing seems to be going right, but then it all seems to like fall in place after that. John brought forward his proposal so that Cheyenne's mother could witness the engagement. She died two days later. I could not thank John any more than what he done when that happened because John was there and he really didn't leave my side. He was the best st uh, rock you could fall on. He really, really was. And tell me, you know, how difficult it's been without your mum. I would do anything to have her here, but obviously it's life and I really can't. So at the minute, um, it's really hard because like your mum's like the main one that actually helps you like plan a wedding and do everything for your wedding. And like on the day, she's the one that's there that helps you get dressed. So obviously it's going to be, for the day, it's going to be it's really hard not just once it's a happy day, it's going to be really hard because my mum's not there, but obviously she's still with me in spirit, so... 
It's life, really. Eighteen months after their first encounter, 15-year-old Cheyenne is busy planning her wedding day to the boy who grabbed her. But the recent death of her mum means that she's doing it alone. Are you having batten house? What's batten house? God, I'm used to this. <laughs> Does your groom want a batten house? What's that? Oh, where well, they go? Yeah, yeah everyone's got to have one there. Carnations? Oh, what's carnations? Oh, come on, I didn't spend too long in school. I'm not too good for this. Well, he didn't go to school to plan today. I florist, did you? Oh, what colour is he wearing? Is he wearing a specific colour suit? Or... <laughs> I think it's grey and pink. I'm not too sure. You think? I think. Uh, it's not down to me, I don't know. OK. How hard is it doing all this organising and planning? It's very hard, actually. I didn't think it'd be this hard. But I don't know, it's like hard for everyone, but then as it's just me on my own, it's... Yeah. It is very, very hard, but I get through it. Has John been helping? John's useless. He's a man. What do you expect? No, John just does what he needs to do. I don't really expect him to help anyway. Traveller men tend to marry later than traveller women, but at the age of 17, John will be a young groom. With regards to that, though, I think you hit the point leading that there, they want to try and get married. But in the likes of boys, you, can, you know what I mean? As I say, there's all different ages of boys can get married. It's just when you feel right. But I mean, I wanted to get married young, so that's what I'm doing, you know what I mean? My wife's uncle, Willie, was married when he was 15. So it's not a case of being young, it's just that when they're old enough and mature enough to be husbands and wives, as per se, then that's it. It's time, isn't it? Whereas the men carry no shame from previous relationships, many traveller girls are expected to marry their first boyfriend. How are you going to marry a woman that someone else has had the first of? That's never going to happen. How are you going to lay with your wife and tell her that it's all lovely and be soulmates and then come across a fellow who, who was there before you? The arrival of Cheyenne's 16th birthday means she can now legally get married. And today, she's gone to collect her wedding dress. There, hold on. I'm not really nervous yet, anyway. I'm more excited than just want it to be, you know. Cheyenne is still mourning the death of her mother, so this year she will not be celebrating her birthday. Usually my birthday is on the same day as my mum, so I didn't really want to celebrate it. I got a wedding to celebrate. <laughs> and what does it mean to turn 16? I don't know, it's such a big age, not such a child, because 15 sounds like so young and so stupid. 16, like you're nearly getting there, you know? It's a good age. is less than a week to go until John and Cheyenne's wedding. Going against advice from his family, John has agreed to an unlicensed boxing match against a former army champion twice his age. Good idea to be fighting six days before your wedding? It is, yeah, I'll take any fight really that comes up, really, to be honest with you. I mean, it's just more fun. Now I can't get hit, you know what I mean? I really don't like it. I begged him and begged him not to do it, but when it comes to a fight and John, John will not take it down if it's the day of his wedding, so... What will happen if he gets a black eye? I'll uh, make sure he has a double <laughs> 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 Whether he loses or wins, I'm really not bothered. As long as he doesn't come out with a scratch, a mark, a dot, I don't care. Come on, John! Though John has emerged victorious, he has not finished the fight unscathed. It's a small fracture. Yeah, so what? Be ready. Put the thing on your arm and get it better. No, no, nothing there. It's okay. Got Please get the camera away. Fracture, but it could be broken as well. And get married in a couple of days, so it's not really good news. What Cheyenne 
I'm going to do? Is she upset? I think she looks upset now, to be honest. I think she won't even talk to me, but she'll be all right later on. Is it your wedding hand that you prefer? Or... No, 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 thank God. It's my right hand. You know what I mean? My left hand's fine, so it's not too bad. So when she puts the ring on it, it's okay. I ain't going to start crying. But um, I don't think I'm going to be able to put her ring on, to be honest with things, because I can't use this hand now. Six days later, with the wounds from the boxing match still healing, John and Cheyenne's wedding day has arrived. Where's your other bridesmaids, Cheyenne? Um, Hang on. Oh, Shannon! Shannon! Could someone call Shannon? Shannon! Go sit down and get your head on. John, stop me. I'm not allowed to speak to him this morning. It's bad luck. Did you see him yesterday? Um, do I see him? No, that's bad luck as well. How are you feeling about seeing him later? Nervous. <laughs> Over in Feltham, the McFadden household is a cauldron of activity. All my shoes, my afterclothes, my after shoes, my makeup, everything's gone with Swanley, and Swanley's not here. What are you going to do if he doesn't come back? Get ready outside the church. <laughs> I am being funny, but I cannot walk around like this. Look at me. I look like a fucking a chef or something. I can't find them. Dad Chris is on hand to give his son assistance. Are these, um, are these special cufflinks? Not really, no. It's cufflinks. <laughs> no, see, what is it? Something buttered? Is that something blue? <laughs> something stolen? Something new? Don't mind him. He's messing with you. No, no these are just cufflinks, mate. These are, these are the family em emblem <laughs> cufflinks. <laughs> Where's your cufflinks? Thank you, been good boy. It's been a year and a half since John met Cheyenne at his sister's wedding. Why, um, John, why Cheyenne? What was, what, what made I fell in love with her, that's why. Because I fell in love with Cheyenne. It's not why or who or what's the reason, you know, it's what happens. I'm going to grow her, mould her how I want her to be. So by the time she's 20, she'll be perfect. How for me, anyways, how I want her to be. I'd be a good wife. Obviously, I'm not perfect at anything. I'm not really that good at cooking, <laughs> but uh, I'll be the best I can. What makes a good traveller wife then? What's the qualities? Being able to cook. <laughs> And clean up. Uh, I'm sorry. Looking after her husband, really. Well, I'm very grown up for a 16 year old. Why do you think that is? Um, I don't know, really. I think that's because of my mum when she passed away and I had to take like a different role and do, like, I don't know, it just grown me up, really. Grown me up, whatever it's called. <laughs> Made me think a bit more about life. What would she be doing if she was here? Um, I don't really know. All right, do you want a minute? Sure. She's only just turned 16, and she ain't got a mummy on the biggest day of her life, really, you know what I mean? And that's when you need her most. So I, can, I can't even imagine how bad it is for her, but... The best we can do is visit the graveyard after we're married and leave a bouquet there, so... It's sad. Well, sign me life away. Sign me life away. Seventeen-year-old cage fighter John McFadden is on his way to get married. The getting in the ring and that it doesn't even scare me, you know. But this hair, oh, this is serious, mate. I feel like a child. I feel I know obviously people can call me a child or whatnot for my age, but at the end of the day, I feel like a little child now. Now, honest to God, I feel my age because now it's so. I feel like I ain't got no one to go back to. You know what I mean? It's bad. Got to go up and do it. <laughs> Charlie, not just driving to Spain. Or somewhere, somewhere different, you know? Just keep driving to get me to the boat. The marriage will bring together both Irish and English traveller families. Yeah, you married just... I'm no, 21. We wish. I, we're both 21 <laughs> and we're both single. So, but we don't believe in grabs. No grabs. 
So we're going to find a nice, nice fella. We found a nice little fella. We found one here. <laughs> we are, I believe, in grabs one day only. <laughs> News of the wedding has spread through the village of Hersham, resulting in a large turnout of eager sightseers, including the paparazzi. As the, uh, I think the Archbishop of, uh, as Bishop of London said last year at the royal wedding, didn't he, that uh, every wedding is a, a royal wedding. But I think we also have to remind ourselves that every wedding is a, is a family wedding. Hi, Jonathan, how are you? Feeling? Yeah, OK, yeah. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right, yeah, not too bad. A little bit nervous, yeah, a little bit that's nervous. Natural, that's all right, right? I'll be that state. The church is lovely inside. I can't wait to see Cheyenne's dress. I think she's going to look lovely, and I can't wait to see John and Cheyenne being married, really. Unfortunately, plans for a smooth journey to the church have been scuppered. Her carriage, a Rolls-Royce Phantom, has failed to turn up. Cheyenne's father is desperate to resolve the situation. Yeah, just tell him to leave. Just wait for him. Just tell him that's hard to leave now. Uh, the car is broken. It's had a smash up. Really? Can someone ring like the church and let them know? No. Brother-in-law Swanley is on hand to steady John's nerves. <laughs> After the first hour, he started getting panicky. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> waiting for her to turn up now. You know, that wants to see her dress or something on behalf. Okay. Well, luckily, it wasn't like mine. Because I was there oh, enough late. She was two and a half hours late. Oh wait, if it goes like that, I'm going to crack up. I really can't. I can't do it. <laughs> I think it was much that meant to start about an hour ago. But it's more than two hours. She's been fashionably late. Cheyenne's Rolls Royce Phantom is still nowhere to be seen. <laughs> What's more, the bridesmaids are becoming restless. No, Julian, Julian, no. Oh Is anyone not sorting this out, oh no? Oh my god. Child, it's a bang. He's going to be at full of the toilet, this is full of what the wedding's going to be over. <laughs> John has now been waiting for his bride for an hour and a half. It looks like she stopped me up, but I, I, you know, if she stopped me up, I'm going to stay here until next week if I have to. I ain't gone. <laughs> I won't think there's going to be many people there, but I am. If you feel like I was feeling, you'd be shitting yourself. It's always like that. Oh, I just really want to go. Okay, I'm really late. Almost two hours late for her wedding, Cheyenne is forced to commandeer the bridesmaid's stretch limo. That's it, you're in. Who's got the veil? Yep. Yeah. I'd say John's a bit always thinking it himself. <laughs> I said to him the other day, I'll make sure I'm late enough for you. It's just walking down the aisle is the worst. I'd say that's going to be the worst bit. It's supposed to be coming out, is it, though? It's here, it's there. Oh, there's so many people outside. Oh, my God. I've never seen anything like this in my life. This way, I'm going this way. I need to get moved. Please, please, can you get all these people out of my face? Right, let me get out of the way. Okay. <laughs> thanks, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, 
John and Cheyenne are, by quite a long way, the youngest couple I've ever married. And although they are remarkably mature for their age, they still have quite a bit of growing up to do. Nevertheless, I have no doubt whatsoever that their marriage will be a success. And put it hard on her. And hold it. Just put on a bit of beef since the last thing. So. <laughs> I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a sign of our marriage. As a sign of our marriage. With my body, I honour you. With my body, I honour you. All that I am, I give to you. All that I am, I give to you. And all that I have, I share with you. And all that I have, I share with you. Within the love of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I therefore proclaim that they are husband and wife. <laughs> Thanks for coming, see you later. Thank you. Did you think I was going to come? After the whole day, eventually she turned up. I mean, it was amazing. Did you think she'd stood you up? Yeah, I did for a little bit, yeah. Everyone kept winding me up, telling me she did as well, so. Where are you guys going now? To uh, my mum's grave to put my bouquet on, to, on it. On the grave. Show respects. Yeah. Cheyenne's mother passed away eight months before the wedding. Having paid their respects, the couple make their way to the reception. Dancing! I don't know, it was a good day. I had a very good day. All the girls looked lovely, and so did Cheyenne. Cheyenne looked really, really nice. And her dress wasn't like stupidly big, it was just perfect size because it was big, and then she had like the best of both worlds. She could move in it. <laughs> yeah. Um, you even know this song? No. Okay, what are you both most looking forward to about marrying life? Growing up together. Sounds just... stupid, but just being together every day. You know what I mean? Just the stupid things like when I get back from working out there and knowing that she's gonna, I'm going back to her. And you know what I mean? It sounds really bad, but. I'm just excited for that. That sounds, honestly, it's like another month or so when I know every day I'm going back to her and I've got the same bed and the same, you know routine. what I mean, the same routine every day. No one coming back to food and a hot bath or whatnot. Cheyenne is welcomed into her new family. Well, my advice for them is keep the love. Best bit about today is seeing two families Two different cultures, the Irish and the Romanese, come together and be one unit, and there ain't one bit of trouble in there. And that's all we want, isn't it, boys? Yeah, that's it. That's all we, we want. want. Peace like, and happiness. Peace yes. and happiness. That's, that's it. it. That's it. And, 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 love and a drink. Else. I can do a drink calling yeah. them as well, can you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> always, always. The bar's calling. <laughs> The young couple's romance first started when John made his intentions clear in the car park at his sister Josie's wedding. He grabbed her, she kissed him, he kissed her, and he got married. <laughs> is that what always happens then? The grab and a kiss in a marriage? Not all the time, no. No. It's just very, very rarely, if you ask me. It's 
matter. Like, especially Cheyenne. I had to grab her like, a thousand times before she even said hello to me. Is that right? Exactly. If I never grabbed her that night, if she never came to my sister's wedding that night, we probably wouldn't be here today. But then saying that, we probably would, because I'd find her somehow, you know what I mean? I'd send her down. <laughs> but, um, grabbing, at the end of the day, it looks bad, but it ain't. The boy looks like he's hurting the girl, the girl wants that, and it's all good. Were you happy I grabbed you? Yeah, I was. <laughs> John and Cheyenne plan to honeymoon at a luxury resort in Hawaii before coming home to share a caravan together. Elsewhere, the seeds are being sown for future gypsy weddings. <laughs> no, but I really don't want to be here. I don't want to do it. Please let go of me. 